morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Rise Urban Nation. I got my sister in the building. I, you know, this person I'm bringing to you is near and dear to my heart because her name is my mama's name. Uh, you know, my mama's name is Patricia, but we call her Trisha. So I, I, I know when we first talked, we had an organically just vibe and it's a vibe thing, you know, when we get our guests on here and I know we're going to vibe out today. So Trisha, where yeah. are you joining us from this morning? Um, this morning, how are you I doing? Am... Yeah, I'm in Round Rock, Texas. I just moved here from California like a year ago uh, and I love it out here. Wait, 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 what's what Round Rock, Texas? What, what 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 can I expect when I go to Round Rock, Texas? That sounds like some place where I go take a retreat, uh, do some hiking and uh, and just meditate. Absolutely. <laughs> we got it all. There's so much to do out here. We're, we're like 20 minutes from Austin, from like downtown Austin. So there's so much to do out here. There's a lot of food. There's a lot of uh-huh. really good nightlife, hiking. There's a lot of water activities to do. Like there's a lot. Right. Now, where did you move from in California? Uh, the Bay Area, San Jose. Bay Area. Really? Uh, so my my, <laughs> my my wife is from the Bay Area. She lives in Sunny Sunnyville, that Sunnyville, San Jose area. So I'm familiar with. I'm familiar with it. All right. So yeah. you know, before we get into where you came from, all that good stuff. You know, let's let's take it back to the origin of this question that I like to start all my guests off with, and that is, who are you? You know, I know that's a deep question. And uh, for the people who don't know who yeah. you are, give them a little bit of who who is Trisha. Man, that's a really great question. Um, where do I start? Uh, I am a I'm a designer. I lo- I'm a creative. Like I love to just like create and come up with cool ideas, work with amazing people, and just have fun. That. That's that's my thing. Wait, how did you get into the design? Did you always know that you was going to be a designer or this was just something that you discovered along the way? You know, I've known it for so long. I've always been creative my whole life. But my whole journey was like I, I removed the creativity and I was like super analytical. Like I went into software engineering. My dad was a software engineer. He taught me math and science. So out of college, sorry, out of high school, I was like, OK, what am I going to do? Like I got to make money. So I went into software engineering and I thought I was going to do that for the rest of my life. But, you know, sometimes things happen. Things are put in your path and you just kind of like have to make a huge shift. So that's what happened to me. Nice. Nice. So software engineering turned designer. Now, I mean, when you say designer, because I feel like uh, we have to clarify that because designer could be so many things in this world now that that you could be a fashion designer, you could be a graphic designer. That's true. What, 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 what is, what, what type of designer are you? What kind of Picassos do you paint? (laughs) Yes, I do. I do graphic design. I do web design, but I do those two things through personal branding. Mm. I love the personal branding space because I love helping people to show up as their authentic self, figure out what their message is Mm. and turn that message into a movement. So that's that's what I'm passionate about. I love it. Turning messages into movements. When did you first realize you had a knack for that? Um, let's see. I was I was I had a different career. I, I have multiple things throughout my journey as trying to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> and um, I was I was really trying to figure out, like, how do I stand out from everybody else? And then I started really paying attention to, like, the messages that people have. And, like, why are some people really attracted to this team or this organization? And it, t- to me, I was like, okay, it's about their message and who they are and what they represent. And so I was like, okay, how can I use my creative skills to help people find that? Mm-hmm. And then, like, show it to the world. Nah. So what is the magic sauce to to branding and marketing? You know, I, I when I look at different brands like Apple, for example, I, I love the way Apple's messaging and branding is. And, and it's because, and this is just for me, like when you look at the core of Apple's messaging and branding, you know, they, they're able to do all these different things from cell phones to computers and so forth and, and get yeah. innovative. And, and, and we still go towards whatever it is they create, even if they are the first in the market to do it because of the way their branding is um, and how, you know, their core message is like just to be disruptive and be creative and all this other stuff. And I love that. Right. So what what yeah. is it that yeah. you see when you see when you look at brands like Apple or even personal brands? Let's let's go narrow it down. Like what makes a brand 
really effective? Is is there like a science to it? Is there a core three things you have to put these three things into your branding to make it really effective to get your 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 unique audience and your your messaging to reach that audience? Yeah, I think it comes down to the clarity of like who you are, what you want to do, like what types of people do you want to attract? But most importantly, it comes down to like you being your authentic self and really being having the courage to share that with others. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of times I'll work with people who they they started to become an entrepreneur because of something that happened in their life, Mm -hmm. whether it was, you know, something positive or something negative. Mm -hmm. And so it's like having the courage to share that with other people as an example to say this is the true me, I think is really attractive. And and David Meltzer is the one that I heard him say. He's like, the truth vibrates the fastest. Mm. So if you can go out there and really share your truth and what your message is and how you really want to help people, you will resonate with those people that you can best help anyways. Mm. Right. So I love the difference between branding and marketing. Like branding is all about like people people resonating with you and people coming to you. But marketing is the opposite. Marketing is about, okay, let me find this audience and let me say whatever I need to say to get this audience. Mm, Do you see the difference? I see the difference. All right. So I love, I love the branding space. So it takes a little bit of, so what I hear you saying is it takes a little bit of vulnerability to get to, you know, the, 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 the core truth of your story and being able to share that messaging uh, to connect people yeah. to the thing that you, you want to see or change in the yeah. world. I yeah, I've had I've had really successful clients um, that are part of an organization. They're building a team, and when I when I am branding them, they say the exact same thing that I hear everybody else saying in other organizations. So I'm like, okay, so we got to figure out like what is your true message? What is your story? Mm-hmm. How can we combine that to create something that represents you, mm-hmm. so you can be attractive and vulnerable and and open to everybody, mm-hmm. right? I love that. I love that. Now, what would you say is the the truth, the true story of your branding genius and and, and what you've been able to create? What's the truth of me? Yeah, the truth of you and your story that 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 sets your brand yeah. you and your branding agency apart from everybody else. Yeah. So so the word hero has been a huge part of my life. When I first started to use the word hero, it didn't really have that much of a meaning. But as I started my, my journey as an entrepreneur, it started to have more and more meaning. Mm-hmm. So hero stands for helping everyone realize opportunities. So my whole journey begins when my dad was diagnosed with cancer for the second time. Mm-hmm. Like it was he had a cancer, a stage four cancer in his throat, you know, chemo radiation kind of burnt his throat. And so I had this burning desire to out how am I going to heal my dad? And the doctors only gave him chemo and radiation. But because I had this desire, I figured out you can heal the body naturally. Mm. And I read 63 books. My mind just like completely opened up to a world. I'm like, how come we're not learning this? So that's the first time where I'm like, okay, I can't just be a software engineer. I have to figure out how to like share this information with people. Mm-hmm. So I, I started out as a health coach. And then, um, cause I wanted to open people's mind to like, okay, there's other ways to like heal your body. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't have any business experience. Then I found out about Bob Proctor, you know, Bob Proctor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I found out about him and it's like, okay, everything starts in the mind. So I have to figure out how the mind works. So I did that. I became a certified consultant with him. I started to learn more about business. Um, and then just like really understanding, like I can help somebody realize other opportunities because mm-hmm. the information's out there. We're just not being taught this. Yeah. Shout out to Bob Pock. So one my, of the so amazing the, business minds of this, yeah. of this past generation. So no, I'm, I'm sorry. I cut you off. What were you going to say? Oh, so, so bringing it back to branding, um, when I help people brand themselves and, and, um, I feel like it opens them up to a world of opportunities mm-hmm. because when you're seen, when, it, when you're painted the way you want to be painted, then you open up a world of opportunities, whether it's speaking opportunities, more clients, like a ton of different things when we work on your personal brand. Mm. So it all, it all fits. It all fits. It all fits. I love it. And I love the, I love the story. I love the acronyms too. I'm big on acronyms. It helps me remember things. Run that acronym back again yeah. for me, hero. Go ahead and uh, run it down. Yeah. Helping everyone realize opportunities. Wow. That's a beautiful acronym. And I might have to steal that from you yeah. because I, I think yeah. that resonates with so many different people. Like, I don't know. It did, uh, that, that song, did you ever know that you're my hero? <laughs> it just came to mind. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes those songs just come to my mind and I like, I have to let them out in some form or fashion. Um, 
man, yeah. this is beautiful. And 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 that's a beautiful way to like really, uh, you know, have a, a culture within your company and organization that really champions the spirit of 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 belonging and creating space to help others and fulfill um, and pour into others. And I really love that portion of it, too. Um and yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, so so I appreciate you sharing that piece with us and reminding us of that. Now, um, I, I always like to take people through the career journey and because uh, when students or anybody that I, 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 I've spoken to in the past, when we used to like, I used to do these career summits, you know, I, they have a hard time of, uh, especially sometimes college students, like when they graduate, they feel like, they need to be, oh, I'm failing if I'm not in that career right away. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Like you have to go through, nobody starts at their first job in the career that, you know, they, they want to, they, they take these different avenues. Um, and, yeah. and so I, I like to ask people the question, what was your first job as we navigate through your career journey? Oh my gosh, you're going to hate me for this. Um, no, my <laughs> first job was actually... <laughs> It was actually working at Apple because I used to be so shy. Uh -huh. So I never had like a summer job. I never worked in like, um, you know, like a retail store or a restaurant or anything like that. Um, I got an opportunity to work at Apple and I'm just like, OK, I'll, I'll do that because I was always into like technology. Uh -huh. So I love that. And so um, through an organization that I was a part of, I forgot the name of it, probably Green Scholars Program or something like that. I got the opportunity to work at Apple. So th that was my first job. Right, first so exposure Trisha to is an exception to the rule, y'all. It doesn't normally <laughs> happen this way but <laughs> i'm pretty sure she's learned a lot from apple that's that she has gone to take with her uh, when she goes there visit so wait, wait what did you do for apple let me let me start there what did you do for apple and what would you say were some of the first things that you probably learned early on in that first job Oh, it was a long time ago. I, I remember working on some sort of a database. Like I was organizing some, um, I think probably like, probably like bugs in the software. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then I also got the opportunity. I'm, I'm, I have a, a MacBook. I took apart MacBooks. Get out of here. And then, and then I had together. Yeah, yeah. Because we were testing like the internal when they had the CD-ROMs. We were testing out those. Ah. So I remember t having to take it and then having to remember to put it back together. So that was cool. Uh, so what did you learn about that? What did you take away from that experience? What did you learn that you that, that probably helped navigated you into you know, your next thing or your next career or something that you probably take away from that experience that you, um, you know, subconsciously or subconsciously have used in business today? Um, probably just the, the value of like working with people. Mm. You know, like, like collaboration, not being afraid to ask questions. I was always that person. Like, I didn't want to ask questions. Like mm -hmm. if I was told something, I was like, I have to or have to remember it. I can't ask because they already told me. So like, I always felt like a burden if I had to go back and ask them, but it, but it's okay. Like ask for help. Like it's okay. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the biggest things I probably took away is my first time, like in a team environment, well, no, mm -hmm. not the first time I did sports and things, but like, um, but yeah, it was in the workforce. Yeah, like probably a like a team culture. environment in the in the work setting versus outside of sports or yeah. school, which is very different too. Um, so yeah. I, I love that, uh, and uh, I, I think when I look at it too, it, even though she's with Apple, y'all, she was doing something totally different from what she's doing right now. Uh, which, <laughs> which as you can see, you know, you don't always. You don't always end up where you start uh, uh, and, and success sometimes is not just taking the next step. Sometimes you have to go around and about back here and, you know, wherever, you know, the next path leads you until you find that thing. That's the thing. Um, now, in your, in your, you know, I know some people are probably going to listen to this and they're going to look black, man, you know, I, I've, I'm, I've been a creative and, you know, you know, branding and marketing have always been something of interest to me. You know, I, I, I like Trisha's story. I resonate with it. Um, I, I want to get into this too. What would you say were the steps that you took to kind of get into your career in business? 
Oh, the biggest thing that I had to, I had to let go of what I was doing, which was really hard because I was like, oh man, I don't want to start over again. Mm. So I, I let, I let the past go, totally gave it love and like, okay, I learned my lessons that I need to learn. Let me lean into my gifts. And so I, I want to always like remind people, don't just be like a typical graphic designer, mm. web designer, a typical brander, like really infuse your essence with it. Um, it's kind of funny and kind of interesting. Like I got a call from one of my friends, like I've known her for like, um, six months or something like that. And she's like, Trisha, I have somebody who wants to work with you. His name is Brian Smith. He's the founder of Uggs. He needs a logo and a letter, a letterhead made. I was like, really? Like me? And then he, she was like, he was, he asked her, okay, why, why Trisha? Why are you recommending Trisha? And she told me, and I can't remember the exact words, but it was something like she does really good work and she's really fast. And that's exactly like who I am and what I want people to know about me is I do really great work and I do it really fast. Mm. And so like those, those are some qualities that I want people to see about me and mm -hmm. how that separates me from other people. So like, and, and I feel like in the branding space, like mm -hmm. I feel like I just kind of made it up. I don't think I'm a traditional brander. I love helping people. I love coaching people, I love helping people find their message. So that's, that's what I include as part of my branding work that I do for people. So, um, so yeah, so don't be lost in the sauce with like being like, what society says is a typical graphic designer or brand or whatever, like add your own flair, add your own essence to it. Yeah. I must say, even when you speak, you got your own flair. Don't get lost in the sauce, ladies and gentlemen, add your flair. That, 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 that's a bar right there. We're going to have to put that in a quote somewhere on the, I, I'm, I'm going to have to print it out and put it at, as somebody's future brand. I don't know who it's going to be, <laughs> but you definitely got your own flair. I would say that, um, and I, I like how you say put your essence into it. And because when you put your essence into your work, it really it really makes you stand out and it makes you a one of one. And there's nobody who else who could kind of repeat and, and, and recycle your essence that, that you have. And and I, I'm, I'm shocked that like part of the essence, too, is, uh, is quality and fast, because usually when you think of fast, you don't think of quality um, and able that the, the, the fact that you've been able to do that. I, I want to say I I give that to your your other brain and other yeah. career for being the uh, in the in your other industries. Do you equate it to that of like putting systems processes, putting things back together, and making exactly. sure that they're efficient? Is, is does it come from? I'm that? glad you see that. Yes, yes. I love organization. I love processes. I love to automate things. I love to make things simple and easy to use, but like not. Uh, not go down on the quality, you know, not sacrifice quality in exchange. Yeah, so I, I feel so, yeah. like that, that previous career has had, you know, some influence in the new career. Uh, is it fair to say that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm so glad, like, like part, part of what I, my, my whole journey is like, I can look back on my journey and think oh my gosh, why did I do this? Why did I do that? Like that was a stupid move. Like I could totally look at life like that, but I released all of that. And I'm like, there was so much that I learned along the way that I use now. Mm. And so, and especially like in the future, like it could zap my energy. If I just focus on all the negative stuff, all the, like, why am I not more successful than I am today? Why am I not here right now? Um, and so like, releasing all of that and just being okay, knowing that I've learned so much along the way and like every failure is just an opportunity for me to grow and for me to learn to be more successful. Yeah, what is, so like, I love my journey. Yeah. I, lo I love that too. What, is, what, what would you say is your key to kind of releasing that? Cause you know, I think this is a, a normal human trait that all of us have. Like we'll have all these accomplishments yeah. and there'll be that one thing that somebody says, that they didn't like about it and then you focus on that one negative thing instead of the hundreds of thousands of praises you got for like how good this thing was so what is that that i don't know yeah. what is your 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 way of, that you kind of release that like how do you what is it a practice is it a ritual is it like like what is it what is it that you do to help you release it's, it's a very it simple released? thing i say yeah yeah it's a very simple saying i say it's all good you know, everything is all good. Everything is always working out for me. So like if you fall off a bike and you get cuts and scrapes, like it's all good because you're learning something new, right? If you fail in business, no worries. It's all good. What did you learn? So I'm always training my brain to see the good in everything. Mm. 
And I think I started that when my dad got diagnosed with cancer because it was such a hard time. Like I had to figure out how to see the good just so for my own like mental sake. Mm -hmm. All right. I love that. I love that. What's yeah. what's one good because I, I feel like you've been through uh, uh, so many different valuable experiences in your journey of life and even building this business. What would you say is one good lesson life has taught you? Oh, man, there's many lessons. Um, one good lesson. Probably probably to be your authentic self. Like I, I naturally have curly hair mm -hmm. and it's like it takes so much energy for me to try to have straight hair. Right. I have to blow dry it. I have to then straight iron it. And then if I do it for so long, I end up damaging it. And I think people where people get really lost is when they try to be something that they're not, whether it's a career or maybe, um, you know, they're just trying to be a person that they're not really. But just being OK, being your authentic self, I think it just fills you up with a lot more happiness. Mm -hmm. Just being OK, like I'm totally OK having curly hair now. I used to hate having curly hair, um, but I just just embrace like who you are. Mm, I love that. And and if I knew that a long time ago, then I would have stuck with being a creative person. But again, I don't regret my journey. Claire, I don't. I, I, and I'm glad the journey took you here because then now we wouldn't get to witness you and all the amazingness of who you are and your authentic, just natural, curly, uh, uh, full of puns and things self. <laughs> 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 yeah, I try to have fun. You know, I, I used to always be super serious in life, but now I'm just like, like release, like just enjoy, right. be in the moment, be present. I love it. Now, what's some advice you would give to somebody who wants to start a career in your industry? Um, and and, mm. and let's let's say like maybe they're fresh out of uh, uh, of college or they're fresh out of high school going into college and they're still not figuring it out, but they they see your journey and it's like you know. I think this is the journey I want to go to, but what's some advice you would give to someone who would like to start a career in your industry that, 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 that is fresh into looking at their career journey? Yes. Yes. So I would, I would say, <clears throat> go back and figure out like, what are your skills? What are your talents? And most importantly, like, what are your gifts and how can you use all of those to like really build something unique? Because like being in business, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of graphic designers. There's a lot of super creative people, amazing people. Um, there's a lot of branding people. But like, how do you use those things to really separate yourself from everybody else? Like for me, like I was, um, I used to be used a hurdler hurt? in in call in high school. Love track and field. Love being super fast and agile. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. And I love I love being like athletic. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So I love being athletic. So like I use I use that I use a combination. Are, are you familiar with Lolo Jones? Yes, I remember Lolo. Yeah, so I love Lolo because she was I, th I think she's so beautiful. Plus, she's very athletic. And those are two things that I love. So like in my work, it's about beauty, but it's also about like showing up strong, like, you know, branding people to show their strengths um, and then me being super quick about it. And so like, that's my whole essence. That's what I bring to like my, my branding projects. And so like figure out, I want people to like figure out, okay, how can you use your gifts, your talents, your skills to really incorporate that into your project? So you separate yourself from everybody else. I love it. That don't chase the money. And don't give up. Don't chase the money and don't give up. Now, why is that important? Because, uh, I mean, you you start a business because you want to get paid, right? But you don't want to be so focused yeah. on the money. So I, how does that, when you say don't chase the money, to give me break that down. What does that mean to you? Yeah. Yeah. So when I was, um, when I was a, a mindset coach with Bob Proctor, I was like, I'm going to make a ton of money. This is going to be awesome. But when it didn't work out that way, then I was like, Oh shoot. Okay. I got to figure out how I'm going to make money. So I completely left the the coaching, not completely. I mainly left the coaching space and definitely didn't do anything creative to go into another industry where it was just about like the money. Right. And then I got burnt out because I didn't enjoy it. I was getting a lot of rejection and it was just horrible. Even though I learned a lot, it was a necessary path for me. But like I understand now that if I chase the money, I'm probably going to end up in a place where I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. Right. And then that affects my work, that affects my mental capacity, it affects everything. And so making sure that you stay true to yourself and you continue to lean into your skills and your talents 
um, and not to be driven away because you feel like you need to make more money, then don't give up in that thing. Mm. Continue. Because building a business, being an entrepreneur is not like an easy thing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have any experience and you don't have the circle of people who are who are successful that can give you advice and really guide you, it's probably going to be a little bit of a tough road. Mm -hmm. But you're going to learn the important lessons to become successful anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, it's a very hard and and sometimes lonely road. Um, so you have to have more yeah. than the 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 outcome or the attraction for making money to get you past those humps. Um I, and the reason why I ask you to clarify on that, because I have a saying too to that I say um, when I give speeches, I say, do what you love, love what you do. Don't chase the money. Let the money chase you. And what I mean by that is uh -huh. when you're doing something with something that you love and you're doing it from a space of genuine love and passion for it, you will attract money like you will attract yes. clients that want to work with you because you're doing it out yeah. purely out of a place of love and passion. Um, and yeah attracting money is way better than chasing money because then you get opportunities and doors open up that, that you, you wouldn't even yes. imagined. Yes. You know, I, I, I have a saying too. I love your saying, but um, I always say a lot like easily and effortlessly. Mm. And when I started to lean into my gift and like me doing creative work and me getting over the fact that I have to post on social media, um, I got a lot of my, my entire client base was all my network and referrals. Mm. I never had to do any kind of marketing. And I was make then I ended up going from like not a lot of money until like four or five months in making eight to $15,000 a month mm -hmm. with zero marketing. And it was just like the money was like chasing me. Like, like it was like uh, an attraction force yeah. of me being my authentic self and just showing my work and showing what I do. Um, and then the people just found me. Yeah. And, and, and so I think when you're, when you're easily and it happens, success happens more easily and effortlessly. Yes, it does. And and the fact that we're having this podcast, ladies and gentlemen, is is also a, a manifestation of that attraction, because I was talking to somebody else who introduced me to Trisha. And then here we are having the conversation. This podcast was started as a, a as a, a, a beacon of hope and love and wasn't really design for me to generate any money and so forth but then it, these opportunities started to come up and then here we're sitting together and then sitting together with other brands and then I, even when I talked to Trish I was like hey so take a look at this because I didn't I, I, I don't know my brand and stuff and you seem like to be the expert she's like yeah let me let me give you it's like thank you for being open and receiving it and I was like yeah anytime because I, I didn't have a plan for this it's just been going as as I go <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I and I love I love the work that you do by the way cuz I think people is so important and the fact that like all day like you get to meet new people and interview them and figure out like what makes them successful and learn from them. I think that's so valuable part of life. Like I I've re once I learned about like the value of people, like my whole my whole like mindset change. It's like, there's so much value from learning from people and like being associated with people and building a network. Mm -hmm. And I feel like through what you do, you, you can be a great connector of people because like, this is what you do because it's a passion of yours. Just like interviewing people and letting people, uh, you know, interviewing people so that other people can know about, you know, what people do and their struggles and their successes and all that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I, and I, and then like, I, like I said to you before offline, like, like you know, people, especially uh, of our different communities and backgrounds need to see people that look like the representation is so important in all these different entrepreneurial career pathways because people can't be what they can't see. And in the ways when it started, like I, I, it was just about me showcasing that talent. And so we could change the mindsets and hearts of individuals that, you know, may have come from, uh, you know, uh, environments that I came from or or the young students that I used to that I I still go time out of time out to speak to like so they could see they they that like I, I'm not just telling them and they're like yeah but yeah I know you always tell me the story but no now I got something to show you look I, I just spoke to this person the other day that's over here doing this I see another person doing this and she's a woman and she used to be a track star just like you <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> that's so that's so amazing like being able to give that gift of hope to people to, for other people to say okay well i'm like that and this person is like that too but she's super successful or he's super successful i can do that too and that's really um let me tell you one other thing so when i first went to the bob proctor event it, it cost me like a lot of money it was in toronto the first time i ever spent money like this on anything um but when i came back i had such an amazing awareness i came back from that event mm-hmm. three months out i wrote my resignation my resignation letter and i quit my job simply because there were so many people like like me out there um, so many young people that were making a lot of money that were happy that were successful and then I was like oh well if they can do it I can do it and that's why I quit my job three months later Mm -hmm. because you you had a new perspective because you haven't hadn't seen that before and now that you've seen it you can't unsee it and now it, it, it 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 moves your heart and your soul to action. Like, I, I want to create life on my terms like they have been able to do it. And what does that look like for me? And it didn't, and I'm glad it did because now, now we have you and we have this amazing thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, the other thing I, 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 I like uh, about your, your journey and that I, I'm, I'm sitting with is, um, and it's two parts to this. One part is something that was said to me in the interview a while back is how um, the work that I do, I, and I never viewed it that way until that person said so, is that like I, I, I am now a historian of the a historian of the history that's being made now by people that look like us. And I feel like you yeah. get to do that as well, too, in your work. You get to create stories that, that will go down in history, brands that will be remembered in history. Do you ever look at yourself that way or is, it, is that, that a new thing? No. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I want to take that. I, yeah, I know. That's that's such a cool perspective to have because, yeah, it's like when I create personal brands, I'm like solidifying what people stand for and what their message is and helping people to spread that and create that movement that started with them. Mm-hmm. Right. And that movement can continue way beyond them. Yeah. And so that movement that you create each and every time is going to is going to show up in history. Right. And and it's going to create history. And so, like, I'm excited to 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 on my end, capture the history that and the movements that you create. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. I love it. Yeah. Thanks for giving me that new perspective. Like that's, that adds like more meaning and depth to the work that I do. And I'm always looking to like feel even more grounded. So I like that perspective. That's going to help me like ground myself even more. So I appreciate that. No, no worries. No worries. So, um, the advice that you gave, I know it was for young people, uh, but there's a, another audience that I like to speak to too, and 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 the reason why I want to speak to this audience because you alluded to like how you just quit your job and you just moved and shifted to this new new career, and I, and I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are stuck in like a dead end job or a a, a job yeah. that's not meaningful, soul sucking, or or they they, yeah. they 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 chose the safe route. They they had the safe job, they had it for this time. It's not fulfilling them anymore, and they they, they want something different, but they just don't know what that different is or how to jump into that. What was some advice you would give to? somebody like that i know for you was attending bob proctor but i'm not sure if everybody has that ability but what did you gain from that that helped you to make that leap of faith and how would you you know coach or give advice to somebody who wants to do it as well yeah i would say first and foremost just like try different things you don't have to like quit your job before you're even making money or before you know what you want to do but just like try different things see what feels right like ask other people hey what am i str- what are my strengths at mm-hmm. What am I strong at? Like, what are my gifts? What are my talents? I can't really see it for myself. Like, maybe you need to ask some people in your community or your family to figure out, okay, this is what I'm good at. Okay, let me see what I could do. And just try different things until something something feels right. Yeah. Now, was your journey like that? Did you did you just quit and then you start asking people, like, hey, what am, what am I good at? <laughs> or you, did you already know before you quit? Uh, and that, I must say, that's a bold move, just quitting. Like, how did that work out for you, just <laughs> quitting and just going into it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, yeah, when I came back from Bob Proctor, I was like, okay, this is going to be so easy. I see so many people doing it. This is going to be easy. Um, but it did not work out like that. But the the thing that I had was I had tremendous faith. I was like, I have a plan. I have a process. Um, I have a program. Like I'm, I have everything that I need, but I didn't 
actually calculate the fact that, okay, like I've never done public speaking. I've never done sales, like all these things I haven't done. I didn't calculate that in. Mm -hmm. So my faith was the one that got and my faith and my desire were the ones that got me to like, okay, I'm quitting my job because I really wasn't, I didn't hate my job as a software engineer, but I was no longer satisfied because I had this massive awareness that I had to do something about it. Mm. So that's why that's why I ended up leaving my job. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, and, and before, like when you, because when people normally go on that journey, like I've heard people say all different types of things, like oh, make sure you got three months of money saved up for when you quit, six months, or like what is, how do you know? when you're ready to take that leap of faith for you, I, I know it was, uh, you had your processes, you had that awareness and that strong faith helped you ground the leap forward. Uh, but what would you say was the ultimate thing that you, you, that gave you safety and, uh, to, to lean into that faith, to move forward? You know, I don't think I really put a lot of attention to having a backup plan. I mean, I did have a 401k and all that. So I knew I had safety. Um, you know, my husband was still working. I knew I had like a lot of safety. Um, but, but I, but I don't think I really factored that, that in. Oh, so you're just, just like, bold. Okay, you're like, I'm, doing- I'm going on was- faith. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know if this is, I'm not giving people advice to do this, but I don't even think I really consulted with my husband. I was just like, Frank, I'm doing this. I'm leaving my job. It's time. I'm just going to do it. Well, I'm jumping. Well, bless that man's heart. Cause he probably was like, okay, all right, we're going to do this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, let me see. Uh, so now that we've, 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 we, we've, we've gone through your steps, we, we've seen the lessons life has taught you. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm trying to think. Where do we go from here? Let, let's talk about the projects that you're currently working on and where can people find you? What projects are you currently working on and where, where can they find you? Yeah, so um, I have a couple different brands. So I have the brand Remix, and it's really to help people like um, kind of like a do it yourself or do it along with me kind of feel mm-hmm. to it. So I really want to help like coaches and consultants really be able to figure out, okay, what is the message? What's, what, what, who's my audience? And narrow down a little bit of the branding aspects mm-hmm. and then be able to create websites. Um, then I have Branded Media and I have a partner in Branded Media. And we're all about, okay, really like now that you've had some level of success, how do you really build your personal brand so that if you want to sell your company, you have a lot of opportunities because people will know you and want to do business with you mm-hmm. because your personal brand is out there. Yeah. Then another cool project I'm working on is um, we're going to be collaborating with some marketers and it's going to be a three day event in Utah where we're going to teach people how to build funnels and then build their their brand around it. So it's not like a lot of theory. It's actually hands on. You're Mm -hmm. going to build the funnel and the brand while you're at the workshop. So I'm super excited for that. So that'll be the end of August. Nice. And now do people have to go out to Texas or is is there going to be any online presence or this is all in person? Um, it's all in person. It's going to be in Utah. Oh, oh, all sorry, not Three Texas, years. Utah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, and, and when are you going to take this this tour on the world, uh, a world tour? When are we going to see you in like California, Texas, oh, and so yeah. forth to get the same uh, information, or on the East Coast somewhere? <laughs> yeah, you know, I am. I'm working on like being being more of an educator now, so being seen more and and doing a lot of speaking. So. Who knows where that's going to take me? But yeah, I will be in California. Um, when am I? Oh, in August, middle of August. I feel like I'm doing a lot of traveling nice. in the next couple of months. So yeah, we'll be over there. Um, maybe doing some speaking. I don't know what I'm going to be doing yet. Okay. Um, well, but yeah, you, if you're ever in the San Diego area, make sure that you come and 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 say hello t- to to Rise Urban Nation. We'll be glad to host something if if we could put something together. <laughs> I will be out there. Yeah, I will be in San Diego, actually. All right. So for so we'll meet up. for those people who want to get the Utah experience, uh, where can they go to like get tickets and 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 start to uh, yeah put their flight information together? Yeah, put um go, uh, put in the URL uh, funnellaunchsummit.com. Funnellaunchsummit. That's where you can find out all the information. Funnellaunchsummit.com. Yeah, and so. Um, now that we have that, and then don't worry, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're driving or if you, 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 you can't find it, I'm going to get all this information from around. I'm going to put it in the show notes so you can connect with, uh, Trisha on not only just the funnel launch, but branding, anything that you want 
from her coaching services to anything that she's doing. Uh, when you look at the industry and the industries that you work in, what does the future look like uh, for your industry and, and just, you know, supporting people like little people like myself or coaches who are in, in consultants and um, other media formats who are trying to build a band? What does the future look like when you when you look at your industry? Yeah, you know, um, I was listening to Gary V, mm -hmm. and he was saying like, it's so important to build your personal brand now because there's going to be so much competition. Well, first of all, it takes a long time to build a brand. It's not like an overnight thing. You work with me and then boom, your personal brand is 100% done. It's like you got to continually build your personal brand over time and it takes a while. But then most importantly, like 10 years from now, there's going to be so much competition that if you don't build your personal brand now, you're probably going to be like irrelevant, not seen, not visible. Like there's a lot of people, um, a lot more competition. And the reason is because people are finding out like it's so much easier to build a business because you don't need a brick and mortar. There's not a lot of overhead. Sometimes you can start businesses that have, that require zero money down. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there's just going to be a lot of other people um, who are probably going to be doing what you're doing. And so building your personal brand will help to separate you and stay relevant and stay visible um, so that you can, um, you know, help more people. Yeah. Uh, when I was a Bob Proctor consultant, there was like, not a handful of us, but it wasn't like a lot of people. When I go to trainings, there'll be a room full of 40, 50 people. But now I haven't been in a while, but like now it's probably like 10 times as much mm. and they're all selling the exact same thing. So it's like, how do you separate yourself from everybody else? People got to know who you are. So you got to build your personal brand because that's the thing that's going to really separate you from everybody else. It's not a product. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of, of price point or anything like that. It's going to be about do I want to do business with this person? Because are they like me? Are they relatable? Are they vulnerable? Mm -hmm. Do I have a similar story? You know? Yeah. Do our values, our, our values aligned? Our, um, yeah, yeah. These are all important things. And and uh, I think in that, and then even as you alluded to, like when, when uh, here's what I was thinking about, like in your brand, um, especially your personal brand, as you grow and evolve, your brand will grow and evolve with you. So, yes. like, if you were known as one thing in your professional world and you start this personal brand and business and it's totally opposite of, you know, the thing that you were known for, it it, it was going to take a hard time for people to get that traction, the, the trust and, and want to exactly. do business with you. But if you have your own personal brand that you people have seen you evolve right before their eyes, they're like, oh, I could trust this, this thing that trails on because I've seen them transition to it. Yeah, exactly. You got it. You got right. it. So um, I love it. I love it. Trisha, uh, you know, this has been a, an amazing interview. I feel like I could talk to you all day, but uh, unfortunately, we try to do this in the drive time and we, we've got a ton of content and I know everybody's going to be satisfied and people are probably going to be blowing your phone up now after this. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let's end here with um, any last words of wisdom that you want to leave with the people that are listening today and we'll just we'll sign off. Let's see. Um, yeah, just trust the process. Trust the trust your journey. Um, always have a positive outlook, knowing that things are happening for you, not to you. Mm. Um, and that'll help you like avoid a lot of like mistakes that happen along the way or, you know, preventing you from pivoting in the wrong direction. Just like stay true to yourself and enjoy the process. Don't be so quick to like get to the end result. You know, just enjoy and, and have fun with the process. Mm. Things happen for you, not to you enjoy the process those are some really gold nuggets rise urban nation so make sure you hold on to that information connect with trisha if you need anything with branding needs we'll put the all the the website everything any social media links too that you have trisha that they should follow you on yeah i think for the most part all my handles are trisha lacan and i'm on instagram linkedin facebook yeah, so follow her um, just to, to see her journey, and we'll wrap it up there. Thank you all for listening. Trisha, thank you again for being with us, and we'll see you on the next thank time. You. Thanks for having me.